In our last video, we explained how a linear supply curve can be derived from data from a linear supply function. The function we worked with in our last video was the quantity supplied equals negative 200 plus 140p. In this video, we're going to explore factors that can lead to a change in the C variable in a linear supply function, known as the autonomous level of supply. This is the quantity that would be supplied if the price of pizzas were zero. Now, just like with our demand function, something that leads to a change in the demand for a product would cause a change in the A variable in a linear demand function. In this case, anything that leads to a change in the supply of a product will cause the C variable to change. So what can cause a shift or a change in the supply? Things that can cause the supply for pizzas to change include things such as the cost of ingredients. It could also include something like the wages for workers in the pizza shop. Additionally, factors such as taxes or subsidies from government towards pizza producers might affect the supply. If pizza producers expect the prices of pizzas to rise or fall in the future, current supply might be affected. Finally, a change in the technology used for producing pizzas could affect the supply of pizzas. If any of these non-price determinants of supply change, then we would expect, expect the supply of pizzas to change, not just the quantity supplied. Therefore, a change in any of these variables will cause a change in the C variable, otherwise known as the autonomous level of supply. For example, let's assume that there is an increase in the minimum wage rate. This will cause wage costs for pizza producers to increase and therefore cause a decrease in the supply of pizzas in the market. Higher wages for workers increase the cost of production for pizza makers and therefore decrease the supply of pizzas. This will lead to a decrease in the C variable in our linear supply equation. Let's say that the increase in wage costs for, fact for pizza producers causes the supply of pizzas to change from QS equals negative 200 plus 140 to QS equals negative 300 plus 140. Next, we're going to see how this would affect our supply function and our supply curve. We now have a new supply function. Quantity supplied now equals negative 300 plus 140p. This occurred because of an increase in the wages for pizza workers. Therefore, firms' costs increased and the supply of pizzas decreased. How does this affect our supply function? Let's find out. With our new supply equation, at a price of zero, the quantity supplied is going to be less than it would have been at a price of zero on our original supply function. This is because the autonomous level of supply has now decreased to negative 300. Therefore, if the price equals zero dollars, pizza producers would be willing to supply negative 300 pizzas. In other words, no output will be produced at a price of zero. If the price changes to two, how does this affect the quantity supplied? Now we see that at a price of two, the quantity supplied will still be negative. In this case, it will be negative 20. In other words, pizza producers won't even be willing to provide pizza at a price of two dollars. However, if the price increases to four, we'll see the quantity supplied now begins to become positive. At a price of $4, 260 pizzas will be provided by pizza producers. Therefore, we can assume that at a price greater than $4, the quantity supplied will continue to increase. Notice again that as the price of pizzas increases from $0 to $10, the quantity supplied increases from negative 300 pizzas, in other words, no pizzas being produced at a price of $0 to 1,100 pizzas at a price of $10. Notice also that the change in the quantity supplied for each increase in the price is equal to 280. Since for every $1 increase, the, the quantity supplied should increase by 140 pizzas, since we are going in $2 increments, the increase in quantity supplied is always equal to 280 pizzas for every $2 increase in price. Before we can illustrate our new supply curve, we must once again discover 
the price intercept. Recall from our last lesson that in order to find the price intercept, all we must do is set the quantity supply equal to zero and solve for price. Here we see that at a price of $2.14, producers of pizzas will become willing and able to supply pizzas. Notice that this is greater than our p-intercept from our previous uh, supply function due to the current decrease in supply resulting from higher wage costs for pizza workers. It becomes more costly for pizza producers to make pizzas. Therefore, there must be a higher price to incentivize the production of pizzas. The new p-intercept, in other words, where our supply curve will begin, will be at $2.14. Using this information, we can plot a new supply curve on our graph. Our supply curve will begin at 214, just above two on the price axis. Now we can go up to a price of $8 and see what the quantity supplied would be at $8. Clearly based on our new supply uh, schedule, at a price of $8, the quantity supplied will only be 820 units now compared to 920 units on our original supply curve. Therefore, the entire supply curve has now shifted to the left. If we connect these two dots, we can see that there is a new supply curve to the left or above our original supply curve. And of course, since the price continues to grow beyond $8, our new supply curve will continue to extend beyond the point that we labeled on the graph. Here we see our new supply curve following the increase in wage costs for pizza manufacturers. Notice that the entire supply curve is shifted to the left. Notice also that the new price intercept is at a higher price than it was at our original supply curve. That's down here. Finally, notice that the slope of our new supply curve is the same. This is because the D variable in our supply function has not changed, only the B variable has. Therefore, the responsiveness of producers to changes in the price of pizzas is the same as it was based on our original supply function. The slope of the supply curve is the same, but the entire supply curve has shifted to the left or upwards graphically due to the higher wage costs for pizza manufacturers. This concludes our lesson on the determinants of supply and what can cause a shift in the supply curve and how that affects a linear supply function. In our final lesson on linear supply functions, we'll talk about the D variable, and what factors can cause a change in the D variable and how that would affect a supply schedule and a supply curve.